Can I help you, Aegis? I hope so, Abbot. Our salvation is at stake. I am listening. What is the significance of these objects steeped in memories? Nemes. I have reread every word that I have on them. Pages that have remained unintelligible to this day. These echoes go back to the beginning of time. To that fateful day in ancient Greece when some dark magician took it into his head to bind a soul to an inanimate object. You see, Aegis, there is nothing more diabolical, nothing more unnatural than this sorcery. The soul is the very essence of the divine. It refuses to submit to such an abomination and resists, eventually breaking. The earliest necromancers whose works have survived through the centuries all describe the same phenomenon. When a soul is fragmented, three shards of memory are torn from its consciousness and take shelter in three objects that the victim held dear. It's as if these memories wish to remain bound to the mortal who had held them until then. I found this notebook written in Latin. Indeed. Medieval Latin, to be precise. Oh, hold on. Balsam. Aegis, what a find. This handwriting. I would recognize it anywhere. It's in Nicholas Flamel's own hand. Give me some time to study this, and I'll tell you what I'm able to glean from it. Have you finished reading the notebook, mon père? Yes, Aegis. And what I learned from it puzzles me. In this diary, Flamel tells of three journeys. Three journeys into what he calls the in-between. A strange world filled with wandering souls. Tormented spirits that are unable to ascend to heaven. This world? It's where Cagliostro's victims were trapped until I freed them. Bonifé, I believe you're right. But that's not all. Flamel planned to return there a fourth time. He wrote this in the final paragraph, in his handwriting. Dated 21st of March, 1418. That was the day before he died, Aegis. What if his body died while his soul was traveling through limbo? What if he were trapped, a prisoner in this purgatory? Aegis, because of your unique nature, we have an incredible opportunity. What do you mean, mon père? If the soul that animates you has been bound to the automaton that serves as its vessel, then it can be separated from it too. And if this were the case, the soul would travel to purgatory, where Cagliostro entraps the souls of his victims. Hold on. Are you trying to convince me to go and find Nicholas Flamel? I'm offering you a chance to speak to the man who discovered the Philosopher's Stone. Surely you won't pass it up. Assuming I agree to venture into purgatory, do I even have a chance of finding him there? Certainly. According to this journal, the soul flies to the zenith of the place where it left the body of the deceased. Or that of the pilgrim, in this case. If Flamel's soul is trapped in purgatory, as we've guessed, you'll need to go to the house where he drew his dying breath. Is it still standing? Of course. It's on Rue de Montmorency, in the Quartier de l'Hôtel de Ville. You can get there via the cemetery of the Église Saint-Jacques. And how do you plan to free my spirit from this automat? We would simply need to break the bond between them. To do this, we would need to stop your machinery. For a short time, of course. We don't want to lose you, ma chère. As for the rest, it will be a question of mechanics, chemistry, or electric currents, or something or other. Therein lies the problem. This is far beyond my comprehension. But it is fascinating, isn't it? Perhaps Monsieur Bailly and Monsieur Lavoisier could shed some light on the matter. Monseigneur. What can I do for you, Aegis? Goodbye, Monseigneur. Citoyen Raymond. Can I help you, Aegis? I went to the Hotel de Massiac as agreed. What I discovered goes beyond your darkest conjectures. The club's members have no intention of merely depriving their slaves of rest. Rather, with the tyrant's support, they plan to replace them with automat harvesters. 
Naturally, Cagliostro, that cur is behind this. Ma foi. But such a plan would certainly only improve the lot of these unfortunate people. You are mistaken, mon père. If the planters get their way, they will have a greater need of slaves than ever. Only this time, they intend to slaughter them to power their machines. Quelle abomination! Partout les saints. Four days ago, the Paris Guard captured a hundred black people. They were to be sacrificed as part of an experiment to test the effectiveness of the automat harvesters. Luckily, I was able to prevent the massacre. Where are they now? In a place they call the Depot des Noirs. I don't know where it is, but I managed to get the key. It bears the inscription, Tor du Diable. The Devil's Tower is a prison in Vincennes, within the Chateau walls. That's three leagues from here. We'll only be able to free the prisoners once we're able to move freely ourselves. At least they were spared the fate that the King and his accomplices had planned for them. And what will you do with the two servants you employ, Monsieur Raymond? I will continue to treat them well, as I always have. However, under the laws you insist on following, they will become slaves again the moment they leave the Kingdom for Saint-Domingue. Certainly not, Monsieur de Robespierre. What kind of a man would I be if what I have heard had not opened my eyes? The planters of Massiac have been proven to be nothing but avaricious murderers. I thought I was dealing with opposition, but now I discover them to be vile enemies, from whom it would be vain to expect any compromise. From this day on, I will fight against their interests with all my strength, and will not lay down my arms until the last slave in the Empire has been freed. Rest assured, then, that the people will fight by your side, Monsieur Raymond. That's the spirit, my friends. Vive l'égalité! Citoyen Raymond. Can I help you, Aegis? Goodbye, Citoyen. Citoyen Bey. Ah, Mademoiselle. Well, what news? I found this box with astronomical symbols on it. I believe it belongs to Vaucanson's daughter. Atanias' secret box. I built it with my own hands. It was my gift to her on her 15th birthday. I wasn't able to open it. Naturellement. Atanias and I are the only ones who know how. Allow me. You must arrange the planets the way they were aligned on the day of Atanias' birth. Voila, like this. What's this locket? Atanias is always wearing this. It contains a portrait of her late mother. She said it was her most cherished possession in all the world. To think the poor child never knew her own mother. froze the moment you touched the locket. I thought you were... I thought I'd lost you. I saw her. At a nice de Vaucanson. The Conde de Cagliostro has her. Mon Dieu. It is just as I feared. He bound her spirit to an automat. Please, say no more. At a nice. It is her spirit that animates you. Is it not? Yes. I believe so. Seigneur, quelle abomination. 
Where can I find Atanasius' body? God only knows. Although I assume that the Comte de Cagliostro is taking pains to keep her alive, this is certainly the only way to keep her spirit alive in you. The only way to free her is to find her body. Why was Eugène de Vaucanson imprisoned in the Bastille? Once he discovered the King's true intentions, he refused to continue cooperating with him. He refused to use his talents to create this abominable army. But the King didn't take kindly to his resignation. Eugène did manage to get a letter to me just before he was arrested. Here, take it. Citoyen de Voisier. What can I do for you, Aegis? I found the powder. It was at the Bastille. Did you do what needed to be done? Yes. There is nothing more to fear from it. What do you mean, nothing more to fear from it? I flooded the cellars where the powder was stored. Bon sang! Lavoisier! Why did you put our fate in the hands of a cursed machine? This machine, as you say, just saved you from certain annihilation. No, you have rendered us impotent. Come now, monsieur. Get a hold of yourself. Mon dieu! Everything I attempt seems doomed to fail. I fear we no longer have any chance of winning this war. Please, calm yourself. What you fear is the loss of your own personal interests. Everyone here is convinced of this. Uh. Do you think there is any way to interrupt... my internal clockwork? To what end? I would like to briefly sever the bond between my spirit and this automat. Hmm. It is a very strange request, madame. For what purpose do you seek to free your soul from its shell? According to the abbot, my spirit would then be able to visit purgatory. Oh, that dreadful place. Why on earth would you want to go there? I hope to find answers to some very important questions. You must understand, madame, that your very nature is a mystery to us. We are ignorant as to the principle that imbues you with life. Nor do we know how your machinery works. That is why it is impossible for us to make even the slightest alteration. It would mean taking an unacceptable risk. Of course, if we had documents that could shed light on the matter... Antoine, the blueprints. What blueprints, mon ami? Ludias. Eugène gave them to me when he was working on the modifications ordered by the king. He wanted my opinion on the potential for reducing the size of certain key parts. The documents are obsolete now, but they could tell us quite a bit about the mechanical principles that are shared by Ludia and Aegis. Bon sang, you're right. Where are the blueprints now? Alas, the situation is not in our favor. I kept them in the safe at the observatory. But earlier, when I went there to collect my most important documents, before setting off for the convent, I found looters making off with its contents. Blasted scavengers! Their kind are always quick to make the most of chaos. I chased them to the Keys, but was unable to apprehend them. When they disappeared into an underground passageway under the Louvre, I decided it was best not to follow them. You acted wisely, mon ami. The automats are everywhere, and the marauders don't stand much of a chance. I'll try to track them down. Goodbye, Citroën Lavoisier. General Lafayette. Do you need help, Aegis? You lied to me, General. Now I know all about your machinations. And what could you possibly think you know? I know that you raised the National Guard for the sole purpose of taking command of it. There was nothing spontaneous about the uprising. Do you have any evidence to support your accusations? I do. I have the manifesto. Bon sang. Why resort to this manipulation? You must understand. What I have done, I did for the good of the kingdom. I wanted to stop this massacre while protecting the Queen and the Dauphin. In the name of the people, Aegis. But an actual uprising of the people would have inevitably led to disaster. Only professional soldiers could organize and lead the resistance.
Who were your accomplices? My brothers in arms, the brave men of the Régiment de Saint-Ange, veterans of the American War, men who at the Battle of Yorktown brought an empire to its knees. Alas, we gravely underestimated the enemy's forces. We thought we would face an infantry supported by a handful of machines, but an entire army of automats. It was unthinkable. Some accuse you of harboring a lust for power. The circumstances were to your advantage. These aspersions are all too familiar to me. But tell me, if I wanted the crown for myself, why did I not take it when I returned from America? When I had seasoned troops at my command and the people sang my praises with one voice? No, that makes no sense. Though I readily admit that I do believe I am worthy of fulfilling an important role for the Queen after her son is crowned. Lieutenant General of the Kingdom, for example. Or even, if circumstance requires, the Regent. Voila. Now you know everything. I haven't left anything out. However, this truth, if it were made public, would play right into my enemy's hands. So I ask you not to reveal anything I've just told you and to give me the manifesto. No, General. You'll forgive me for choosing to hold on to it. In that case, my fate remains in your hands. Can you at least tell me where my detractor is hiding? The one who is spreading these charming rumors about me. He comes and goes. One day he's here, one day he's there. It would be pointless to try to confront him. Oh, no matter. I will not let this serpent continue to vilify me. I shall get redress for these aspersions in the end. Do as you wish, General de Lafayette. Goodbye, General Lafayette. Madame? I'm surprised to find you here. Did you follow me? Didn't you know? The Duke's allies are always impeccably informed. Some even say that we have eyes and ears everywhere. What do you want from me? To tell you the truth, I can't wait to hear what you've discovered about the matter at hand. And I was afraid you might leave me in the lurch. You can never be too cautious these days. That's why I decided it would be better for me to come to you. You were right. Lafayette was behind this purportedly popular uprising. Aha! I've got him at last! But he had no intention of handing his men over to the king. His goal was to raise an army and command the troops himself. It doesn't matter. These troops would have allowed him to crush the patriots and set himself up as a dictator. He lied to the people. He lied to the Assemblée Nationale. His time has come. All I need is for you to give me the proof of his treason. I have no proof, monsieur. You will have to be satisfied with my word. Your word? What good is your word to me? Do you think I can convince people by repeating baseless accusations? Believe me, I have tried, but without much success. No, it's useless. I must admit defeat. We will have either the King or Lafayette, one despot or another. In either case, my fate is sealed. I will soon join the Duke in exile and I will abandon my beloved people to their doom. I have no other choice.
you a boss. He hurts. He hurts. Yeah. Well, don't you think it was worth it? This tunnel is a gold mine. With what we've managed to gather, we'll be safe. Lutus from the observatory. Poor souls. I didn't stand a chance. Citoyen B. Ah, mademoiselle. Well, what news? Here are the blueprints you asked for. Good heavens. You found them. 
Your thieves were not able to profit much from their theft. They met with an unfortunate end. Oh, the poor souls. Their crimes did not deserve such a permanent ending. Certainly, certainly. Let us look at these documents now, if you will. No, Antoine, the F-wheel is not part of the cog that transfers the driving force to the escapement. Diable, you're right. It's driven by the B-wheel, and its axis is on the shaft that's visible at this point. Precisely. In fact, the shaft sits between the conical bearing and the small groove here. See? True. It's decided, then. All we would have to do is separate these two plates to disable the entire thing. And to put them back in place at the agreed time to start the machine again. You will not be able to assist me. I have to do it alone. Half a league away. You must be joking. By no means. You'll have to find another solution. Unfortunately, madame, you're asking us to do the impossible. Oh, ça, par exemple. Once your spirit is untethered from this automat, it will be impossible for you to start the machine up again. Hold on, my dear Antoine. Is this device in figure four? Is it still in place? Hmm. Yes, it is. What of it? Bon sang. It's a timer. It's primitive, true, but fully functional. The dial has marks from 1 to 15. Probably minutes. It was to allow Eugène to plan the duration of Ludia's dances in advance. Oh, I see. And by reversing the position of this peg in the center, we could instead turn it into a period of inactivity. Nous y sommes, mon ami. Fantastic. Will Aegis be able to operate this device herself? We'll make it easier for her. All you have to do is put a bolt there that she can remove when the time is right. Yes, a small iron rod will suffice. We won't have any trouble finding something that will do. When the timer dial reaches zero, the automat will come back to life. However, given the dial's fragility, we will probably get only one chance to try this. Are you sure that the bond between my soul and this machine will be re-established? Ma foi, I admit that we can't be sure of this. What do you say, mon père? Don't be afraid, Aegis. Unless I've been wrong from the beginning. Your soul will seek refuge in the only body it has available to it in this world. Well then, shall we start the preparations? Let's begin. My fate is in your hands, monsieur. Voila. Everything is in place. When it's time, just pull on this metal loop to start the timer. Remember, you will have 15 minutes and no more before your spirit returns to your body. We wish you good luck, madame. Remember, to get to Rue de Montmorency, you're best going through the cemetery behind the Église Saint-Jacques in the Quartier de l'Hôtel de Ville. Here is the key to the gate. Our prayers are with you, my child.
for so long with a word uttered. <laughs> In singular contemplation of such terrible slaughter. A long time, you say? That's not possible, sir. I've just now appeared to you. Nay, but thou must trust me. And thou was hardly alone in this limbo. There were many travelers, stiff and silent, all in agony, all bound to the anchor stone. What travelers do you speak of? The first to arrive was a sobbing child searching for his mother. <laughs> After him, many a damned soul carrying their own heads in hand. Then, those whose thoughts passed through me. <sighs> A minister of God, tormented by doubt. Hold on. A minister of God? Monsignor de la Far. A scholar with soul star-filled, and a learned master of alchemy. Monsieur Bailly and Monsieur Lavoisier. A usurer who shed so many tears for his lady. Monsieur Necker, mourning his wife. All bound to the anchor stone. <laughs> Wretched souls, their ascension to the heavens repelled. The anchor stone, monsieur. Lapis philosophorum. The philosopher's stone. Aye! Vile knave who took it for his own lately. No count is he but that of Christmas and perfidy. Cagliostro. Well met. Broke for this violet and I shall be avenged. The Anchor Stone keeps the travelers in this limbo and makes them masters of the Iron Titans. From the defunct springs the fire that burns inside these demons. <laughs> Lanterns of the dead, witchcraft of the blackest sort. The terrible slaughter. You say I was just observing the massacres. I, vile innumerable crimes. The devil's own accursed titans and their restless horde. They drinketh from the lake where the souls of the dead sleep. <laughs> Men and women offered in sacrifice to feed the pyre. Then the terrible moor was opened, and in flowed legion of the dead. Ne'er has I seen such and so many here during all my stay. Oh. The stone is verily my dark confine. Longly, so longly, that my vessel is no more, and my soul still cloistered in this place. Alack, I do despair of ever ascending to heaven. Gentle dame, I prithee do shatter my stone. You want me to break the stone that contains your soul? Is that what you're asking me to do? I, my God, I beg thee. Do you know where this stone is? You've been buried for more than three centuries, monsieur. The precious jewel, sublime treasure, was inscribed in my legacy, my testament, my testament. On my tomb engraved, gentle dame, on the tomb! Encounter. I must tell Abbe Grigoire about it immediately.